Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining this webinar about Domino 3.5 release that just went live today. My name is Kelly, and I'm a product marketing manager here at Domino, and I'm with our head of product, Georgi Mediv. We're excited to share with you the latest features in Domino 3.5 serving data science leaders. Before we start, here's a few housekeeping notes. We are recording this webinar and we'll share the slides out to everyone who's registered. We'll also post a link on our resource page if you want to share with your colleagues. Unfortunately, we won't have time to take live questions today, but if you have a question or have any topics you'd like to learn more about, please submit through the question box in Zoom and we'll respond by email after the webinar. We also have another exciting webinar coming up on July 10th featuring Forrester's senior analyst, Cheryl Carson, and our chief data scientist, Josh Poduska. They will discuss the shift from being data-driven to model-driven and its impact on business strategy. So please register at the link on the screen if you're interested. Now let's talk about what's new in Domino 3.5. Through our work with Fortune 500 companies, we find that even the most sophisticated data science organizations struggle to keep track of their data science projects. Data science leaders want to know at any given moment, what are the latest updates and roadblocks when it comes to model development and what projects need their immediate attention. But while there are plenty of tools for individual data scientists, the needs of data science leaders have not been well served by existing tools in the market. For example, a VP of analytics at a wealth management company told us that he had to walk around the office, pen and paper in hand, going from person to person in order to get an actual count of projects that are in flight because their traditional task tracking tools didn't quite align with the workflow of data science teams. It turned out that the final count was way off from the initial estimate provided to the CEO. To help solve this problem, Domino 3.5 equips data science leaders and IT admins with an enhanced control center, which allows data science managers to define their own data science project lifecycle, track and manage projects with a holistic understanding of the latest developments through Project Portfolio Dashboard. In addition to that, our new license usage reporting offers a detailed view of the level of Domino activity for each team member so that data science and IT managers can manage the allocation of Domino licenses and have full visibility and predictability for their costs. We also have new options for users to create large data set snapshots directly from laptops or desktops with increased upload limits up to 50 gigabytes or 50,000 files on the COI. Now I'll hand it over to Gorgi to walk through these features through a demo. Hello everyone. As Kelly mentioned, we have a number of features we would like to walk you through today. First, I will start by demonstrating how Domino administrators can configure the project stages workflow that they would like the rest of the organization to use for data science development. To do that, we can go to the admin portion of Domino and under advanced, select project stage configuration. There is a default configuration that comes with the product, but it is possible to customize the workflow to fit your needs. You can remove stages, add stages, or rename stages as you see fit. Here we have pretty typical project stage configuration. Projects start in the ideation phase, go through data acquisition and exploration, then active R&D, validation, production deployment, and ongoing monitoring. Now that we have the project stage workflow configured, we will walk through how data scientists will interact with it. I will switch to my colleague Avinash's session. Avinash is working on a number of projects, but he is currently focused on a customer churn analysis project. We can see that this project is in the R&D phase, but at any point, you can go and change it to a stage that you believe is more appropriate. Next, we go into the Experiment Manager, and we can see all the work that Avinash has been doing recently. To understand the results from his experiments, we can go and sort based on the AUC metric. 
we see that with a lot of experimentation, Avinash has been able to get to 0.65. The project goal, however, is to get to 0.8. At this point, Avinash has tried a number of different approaches and he's starting to run out of ideas. One of the options that he has is to use the project stage panel to raise a blocker. When raising a blocker, Avinash is able to leave a short message indicating the current state of his project. In this case, he describes that he has tried a number of different approaches and none of them has been successful in achieving the desired goal. After the blocker is raised, it is promptly reflected in the activity feed for the project. The people that Avinash is working with are now able to see this and potentially help with ideas around how the AUC can be improved. This is a great example of how project stages and status can be used from point of view of a data science practitioner. Switching back to my own session, I can see how this functionality can help data science leaders. As Kelly mentioned, we have added a new section in the control center called the Project Portfolio Dashboard. The dashboard gives us a portfolio view of all the projects in the system and enables a number of useful capabilities. I can quickly filter on projects that are blocked and as a data science leader I can easily see that Avinash has run into some problems. I can review his work in the activity feed and then make suggestions on how he might be able to improve his results. In addition to project status, I can drill down based on the current stage of projects. Here we have a few that are in the ideation phase, a few that are in the data acquisition phase, and a few that are in the R&D phase. As a data science leader, the project portfolio dashboard gives me a ton of flexibility to understand how teams are working and what my R&D pipeline looks like. Now we'll switch gears a bit to do a walkthrough of how to do more detailed user activity reporting, which is another feature that we added in Domino 3.5. The enhancement was introduced for the purpose of improving the ability to drill down into license usage and give Domino admins a chance to better understand how users are utilizing the platform and manage the licenses that have been allocated to them. These changes are available in several portions of the Domino admin experience. If we go to the users page, we can observe some of these enhancements. First, we'll see a summary of the license usage on the platform. In this case, I have a Domino instance with 1,300 users, of which 127 are practitioners, and the rest are results consumers. Practitioners are users who have performed one or more practitioner workloads, such as starting a workspace, executing a run, launching an application, or model API. On the other hand, results consumers are users who only log into projects to check results and run launchers. The users page has been enhanced with a number of fields that reflect the status of users. As you can see, here we have a mixture of practitioners and results consumers. The page is now sortable, which allows an admin to quickly identify users who have not used Domino in a while but are taking up a license. In addition to the enhancements on the users page, we also have added another level of detail in the user activity report. The report allows a Domino administrator to really drill down into the details of usage for a particular time frame. In addition, administrators can define the time period that will be used to calculate the category of recent metrics in the report. Now I will execute the report for a period of one month and a recent metrics window of seven days. The report is now generating. It is a simple CSV report that gives you a ton of details. I will open this up and enlarge the columns. 
Here we see the status of users, the type of license they have, and number of different metrics, such as the most recent activity, as well as the total number of practitioner workloads, both over the period of the report, as well as over the recent activity window. The same applies for all other metrics that we track for users. This report is the most detailed tool for administrator to dig into the activity of Domino users and identify individuals who may not be actively using the platform but are taking up a valuable license and then take corrective action on the users page. In addition to this on-demand version, the report is also available on a scheduled basis where administrators are able to configure the frequency of generation. The report is delivered to both Domino administrators as well as Domino and is used for the purpose of license compliance. The third feature we are introducing today has to do with enhancements to how we create Domino dataset snapshots and more specifically making that process easier and more scalable. In this instance, I have a project called Stanford Dog Analysis. It is a project that I just started, and I will switch it to the data acquisition exploration phase. One of the first steps is to actually add data for the dogs that I intend to analyze. For that, I go ahead and create a data set. Similar to my project name, I will just go ahead and call the data set Stanford Dogs. The new feature that we have added to the Domino 3.5 release compared to when datasets were initially introduced is the ability to upload files directly from the browser. In this case, I will go ahead and browse for directories. I have a predefined dataset that contains some dog images that I would like to use. We'll go ahead and upload that. Now we have 244 dog images ready for upload and I'm about to create my snapshot. As the upload is starting, it is worth mentioning that as part of this feature, we have made a number of enhancements that allow the process to be interruptible and restartable, making it much easier to work with large data sets. If the upload process gets interrupted, you will not lose progress and will be able to restart from where the process last dropped. In addition, we have increased the scalability of the upload process to now support 50 gigabytes of data or 50,000 files in a single upload. This is true for both the browser-based and CLI-based upload. With the upload completed, we have a snapshot created under our Stanford Docs dataset. We're now ready to do some actual data science. Back to you, Kelly. Thanks, Gurgi, for the demo. To learn more about the details, please visit our support site that has the most up-to-date release notes. That's a wrap. Thanks, everyone, for joining the webinar. Please let us know if you have any feedback on our new features, and let us know if we can be of any help.